Hello and welcome back to Walk the Cinema podcast, where we walk the cinema so we can talk the cinema. Today's episode, we bring you Cinema Perdizo. So this was one of the picks that you have been wanting to watch, so why don't you give us a little scenario of what happened? Yeah, I've been the one that wanted to watch this because I really like Italian cinema from all decades. And this one has been eluding me, but we got around to it. And it's a story that's kind of told in a flashback of a filmmaker that's remembering his childhood and teenage years back in his hometown where he learned how to be a projectionist and also learn how to love film. And since we love yeah, film, and this film is very reminiscent what a more of perfect another film about. that we've already taken a look at, uh, Hugo. Yeah, you can find that episode yeah, and, on and unlike the platform Hugo, you're listening to us on. It's not necessarily a love letter to, to filmmaking, which I feel like Hugo is. This is more of a love letter to about mm. watching films and like consuming being in a theater. You know what I mean? Well, I feel like the the main love of the movie is being in a theater, movie theater, classic movie theater where people gather to watch the movie, which in some way, yes, we have movie theaters and people go to watch the latest Disney movie and stuff like that, but yeah, Back then, it was a know, daily wait, thing to watch whatever movie they, they were showing. Wait in line and, and that's what you had for the newest part of a series, or you know, and there was no guarantee that you'd even be able to watch the movie that you were in line for because they had to 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 cart the the film back and forth between different movie theaters across the region. So sometimes you were just out of luck. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, but sometimes it's so packed you couldn't even get in. Yeah, the the main l resemblance to Hugo is that the main characters in Hugo is young all the way throughout, and this is young for you know most of the yeah. beginning parts where you feel the movie magic getting in. And from what I understood, the director drew a lot of influence from his own childhood, and I think that beautiful neighborhood that he shot in was the one he was born in and grew up in. So there's a lot of pers yeah, it is personality very touches to this from the director. All the way through. Like, it seems like this director grew up in a small Italian town, growing up loving films, loving watching films, and, you know, eventually did become a filmmaker. So it's, it's kind of nice... It, it brings a level of nostalgia that even though I've never experienced any of the things that happened in Cinema Perdizo, it still felt like I, I, I was feeling nostalgic for a time I've never experienced. Yeah, it, it did feel like it felt, it felt so nice and magic to be in his shoes, even though it was hard. And like his mother, they don't want him to be doing it. And you know, Alfredo, which is his father figure, which is the reason that he's having these flashbacks and these remembrances of the childhood yeah. is because Alfredo passed away in present time. And Alfredo was was kind of pushing him away from it because, you know, it's not a glorious type of job. It is very hard to be a projectionist. But he kind of yeah, also and, at the same time I mean, was his mentor like for Alfredo's most of it. the whole reason that Toto has any sort of passion for this, you know? Like, he, he always had a curiosity when he, he was a child about the projectionist and, and, and movies and things because he would, he would sit and watch um, the uncut movies. Yeah, I think part of it was also, was also the, the priest not allowing him to watch the movies because it was the altar boy and the priest didn't want him in. I think part of that not letting him in was the trouble exactly. he and wanted to be in. 
Kids don't like to be told no. Going like being able to see the movie before it's being cut and then being fascinated with the person that is doing the physical labor of, of cutting the films and. We're talking about cutting the film. Some people might not know or what we're really referring to, but yes. in the fifties in Italy, everything was heavily censored. So if there was any groping, kissing, nudity, obviously, or anything of the sorts, it'd be cut out of the film by hand. And that's, that cutting by hand and leaving the film in in pieces is what caused us to see a small version of Salvatore almost burning his sister because he left the film at home and it's highly inflammable. And then that's what causes Alfredo to be in a massive fire, which destroys Cinema Paradiso. And then we get the new Cinema Paradiso, which comes to the Italian title of it. The Italian title is the new Cinema Paradiso, but the international title yeah, is just Cinema Paradiso, just, which I think is a better in title. Terms if it's of, the overall um, movie storytelling more. with with that whole arc of of the film being flammable. To you and me, we both know that old film was highly flammable. And as I was watching the movie, he's uh, Alfredo yeah. did tell Toto that the film would catch fire if he wasn't careful. But um, Toto didn't mm-hmm. believe him, which, you know, you, you, yeah, it's true. Yeah, exactly. He didn't believe a lot of the things. Exactly. That so he goes home to look at the films him. and he's holding it up against the fire. And I was sitting there watching like, oh, my goodness, what is this kid doing? He's literally going to catch the house on fire. And. You know, it's because he didn't. He didn't think that he didn't. Yeah, exactly. But he almost caught a sister on fire. He kept his pile of stolen film reels or film pieces. He kept it near. Oh, what was it? He kept it near something hot underneath his bed, I think. And it caught fire and almost killed his sister. Hmm. That's that's the little you know. Showing you what could happen with film in a small amount. And then later on, we get a room full of reels with 100 times more yes, inflammatory and it, and film it, in it that catches on fire. Yes. And yes, almost and kills Alfredo, Alfredo and ruins the theater. And that's how Toto becomes... He leaves Alfredo blind, which is the worst thing that could happen to a cinema lover, but... He does yeah, mention that and, becoming blind makes him see in a new way. He become more he become more wise, and he it helped Toto grow up. And I really enjoyed with his wisdom um, because that Toto didn't have a father. Um, where we see a, a very a, like a child version of Toto um, become the new projectionist for the new theater, and. The yeah, and Salvatore touches mm. yes as he, t- he as, touches as his Salvatore face, touches Alfredo's his face, face when he comes to visit him. Alfredo is blind now at this point, and then it cuts back to Toto, and he's now like a young adult, like a teenager, like he's grown up. He's he's become more mature. Yeah, he's a teenager that starts. Starts trying to make his own yes. movies and falling in love with a girl at a school. And the girl is not super into him in yes, the beginning. That's probably and, and one that's of my how we get favorite the, the parts soldier story. Of the movie was when Alfredo was telling a young adult, Salvatore, Salvatore, uh, the, the, the story of the soldier and the princess and how the soldier stood outside the princess's. We were just sitting there staring at the screen for the five minutes he went on. We didn't move or say anything. We were just listening to the story as yeah, if we were really... Toto because he was so fascinating. Yeah, we were both entranced by it. I was completely really, entranced really... by it. I don't know if the story is necessarily interesting in in a in a traditional sense of the way, but the way that... Alfredo was telling the story. It was it was very captivating. 
Yeah, I could have I could have not listened to him there. And then he kind of matches into Toto's life where he does want this young girl in his school and he waits for her and then yeah. he gives up on waiting but for her because it's around. not meant to be. Yeah. And then she's the one that has to follow him. She's the one that has to go to him. No. And they start this romance Which that doesn't I last did, incredibly long. We don't get like a full closure with that. Like she co her father doesn't approve of the relationship, so you know, he's not able to to keep in contact with her when he's in the military and Yeah, he moves her out. You know. It doesn't work out. Yeah, it kind of just doesn't work out. The dad puts her in a college yeah, just, in a different city. He has to he has to serve his military duty. Yeah, and it's, then it's, when he comes back to the town, there's just from what I've read fun. because I did do some some looking into this movie afterwards. There's the extended cut, which I think does have more scenes with Elena and even some. Um, yeah, with an older Elena, where they like meet up again. It it Ooh, still doesn't Elena. work out between them, but they get I think some type of of closure that they really didn't get mm. when they were young, you know. Yeah, he, he, towards the end, he does like rewatch the videos or the films he shot of her. And he is reminiscing her. And I can see how you'd cut in at some right. point her returning. And, but I, you know, I'm okay with how things that. were left, you know. Sometimes you don't... You... Yeah, I still absolutely loved everything yeah. about it. There even though I see of, a lot of its flaws. I don't know if you would call them landscaping shots. But just shots of the town that were extremely beautiful. In every sense of the word. But. Yeah. The ta the, these Italian movies, when they do these wide shots of the towns, they just look great. They had a wide shot of those red things that the women were touching. Yeah. I don't really know what they were, but it still looked amazing. And then we get the the, the town... Yeah, he's Ooh, like the homeless I don't know, man. the shenanigans that he thinks he owns the square. <laughs> and he messes with that, and yeah, he kind of ruins that shot at the end of it. But yeah, there's a lot of great shots. There's a lot of great music, especially in the final scene, which we'll talk about. Yeah, but then a also, bit some more of the flaws the end, that, just that to I close saw, this episode. You, you mentioned kind of earlier on in the film when we were watching it together how dramatic a lot of the cuts were. In the beginning, the cuts were more dramatic. The, it, I don't know, the storm. You use the, the cut storm in two different occasions where yeah. he just lays, and there's a close-up of his face, and it starts storming. And then he cuts to the movie. And the, the, at the beginning, it feels dramatic, but then at the end, he uses that as a teenage Salvatore is laying by the river, and he yeah. wishes that if it was a movie, yeah, he would true. just start a storm, and then it would cut. So it, it kind of wraps around there's to that scene. And so like a lot of there's a lot of example, payoff in the movie. We'll kind of move on, to, kind of towards the end. At at the beginning, um, when a young Toto asks Alfredo for the cut pieces of of film that Alfredo is just kind of saving because he couldn't find the place where they belonged in the reel. He asked if he could keep it, and Alfredo says, you can have them, but you can never come back here, and I'll keep them for safekeeping. Yeah, I'll keep them for you. And it's kind of, for you. at it's the end, course, you know, he, you. when Alfredo dies, um, an old Toto is given this film reel, and he doesn't know what it is, but when he looks at it, it's, it's all the pieces of the cut film that he... They're all stitched together, and it's kind of like, yeah, he never yeah, returned after 30 together. years, and Alfredo still kept it, and he kept his promise. If he never returned, he, he'd keep them for him. Yes, that song is very pretty. And it starts playing that gorgeous song, that amazing score that starts playing, and and I, I just, that ending was so amazing. It's one of my favorite endings of all time. 
the whole movie throughout is magical, but that ending really, really hits it home with just how it wraps it yeah. up in a way that I, w- I didn't predict, where we should see a compilation of the cutscenes that were like super important throughout the movie that they had to cut these scenes out and they were not allowed to watch Kissing or anything. So the first time they did, when Salvatore didn't cut it out and let them watch yeah. the kissing scenes, the people went crazy in the theater. And now he's just watching the compilations of everything that his mentor cut out. Yeah, and it's just yeah, a it's pretty incredible of all and these, it's pretty emotional. These kissing scenes from some of them are like more famous and recognizable than others, and you know, yeah, yeah. There's some Buster Keaton and Charlton Chaplin, and there's some probably some Italian movies. I think it, it must have been yeah, a lot of fun for the director to like pick the movie that he was going to show in his own movie. Yeah. We- because he, sh- he showed hundreds of films, kind of. Yeah, we get to see a trailer for Stagecoach. So then another great film. John Wayne. We get to see a lot of these little posters that Alfredo has in the projection room. Of Casablanca. And just, yeah, just so coolness, goodness special all around. Movie, I would say. It's... it's- It's something that I would sure. think it was as fun also, to make as it was for us to watch. Note, there's like so many different little, I don't know if you'd call them Easter eggs, but just little like snippets of things that kind of carry throughout the film. Like the couple that me at the old, the cinema Prodizo that hadn't burned down, mm. they meet across the way and they see each other and you see their progression like from starting to date to getting married to having a kid and then to being old together at Alfredo's funeral which is like not it's not a big part of the film but it's just yeah, nice to see yeah it's not it's not part of the story but it is like it is part of us watching the town grow as well as Salvatore because we also go from a very small town with a huge empty square with a one movie theater to now something that has actual buildings and roads and cars. Yeah. So the and, town um, also grows. Salvatore there's grows. something very like heartbreaking to me about the owner of the new Cinema Prodizo starting to cry as it gets blown up because it was condemned. You know, it it got closed down. People weren't coming. You know. Yeah. That was part of the director wanting to make a movie about how movie theaters were going to die. And, okay, we still have movie theaters 40 years after. But in a way, is correct about the way we go to movie theaters changed immensely. We're not going every day. We're not waiting in lines for the a movie that we don't really know what it is. We just kind of want to watch something. We want to have fun in a, in our neighborhood. We want to entertain ourselves so we don't have anything else because there's no television. There's just yeah. the movies. That's what you had to do at night. You, you just went to watch whatever movie the theater managed to grab. And... It was a different way of watching movies. I don't know if it was better, if it was worse. Some people like to have a lot to pick from. Like on Netflix or any streaming service, you get a lot of choice. Back then you didn't. I don't know if it's better or worse, but it is different. So it's, I guess it's, it's changed, but I don't at least know changed, necessarily if, if not it's ended. ended. Sure, we don't have like the big community gathering at the theaters that we used to. But I mean, I think there's always going to be people that enjoy going to theaters. There's always going to be, I think, an opportunity to go to theaters. I think there's a lot of entities actively preventing the downfall and disappearance of theaters. Yeah, we we don't want theaters to go. We go to theaters to watch just whatever is on sometimes. Just watch a uh, yeah. 
Cucumber Batch movie. I don't even remember. A Courier? You watched The Courier because it was the only thing that it was on that we hadn't watched. So it's still fun to just go. It's a whatever movie, but it's a fun activity. I can watch in a whatever movie at home. I can watch whatever movies at home or good movies or bad movies, but it's not the same. I also like to watch movies at home, but I like to go into the theaters and just watch whatever's on. I agree. It never loses its fun and novelty. To kind of wrap this up, why don't you tell us your reading? Yeah, I gave it a 10 out of 10. It immediately became one of my favorite movies, (laughs) and I can't wait to watch it again. That's all. You know, I thought it was beautiful. It was, you know, made me feel, I love feeling nostalgic, even if I don't know what I'm feeling nostalgic for necessarily. But I don't know if I can say it's one of my favorite movies of all time. You know what I mean? Not yet, anyway. Yeah, no, I, I, it, not everyone has to like the same things. And uh, it is a little soapy. It is a little over dramatic at points, but I think the payoffs are amazing. And the ending is one of the best endings you could ever hope for. So, with that said, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, comment, rate us. And we'll see you next time.